Hello, Brad McCarthy here from Bold and Break. Today, we are making this very cool fractured glass in Cinema 4D and Redshift. We will also be bringing the stills into After Effects. The working files are available on the Bold and Break store. Please check the description. The link will be there. Please remember to like, subscribe, comment. Very important for the channel to grow and for me to be encouraged to make more content. Please check out the Bold and Break membership. It only starts at one pound. You get a working file of your choice for free and exclusive benefits and discounts to the Bold and Break store. And that store will be growing over time. I will be releasing another material pack before the end of the year, possibly two. So let's get started. We want to create a cube. Have your cube selected, tick fillet and put the radius to seven. We want to break apart this cube without doing anything too destructive. So we want to bring in a Voronoi fracture. Shift C. Voronoi fracture. Make the cube a child of the Voronoi fracture. Select your Voronoi fracture and go to sources. These are the default points of distribution. So if you add a random effect or like a push part, these are the points at which it will pull apart the cube. We don't want to use the default. We want to do something more interesting and have more control over our points of distribution. We're going to delete this. We are going to bring in a matrix object as our point of distribution. So type in matrix, select your Verona fracture, have the sources tab selected and bring in your matrix object. Bring the count on the X axis of your matrix object to 30, maybe 20. Said we want to control how this matrix object works. So we're going to go to our effectors panel, press shift C again and bring in a plane effector. And the matrix object as a whole just jumped up. What has happened here is in your plane effector in parameter, there is position that is ticked on. If we tick it off, it will go back to its default position. If we tick that back on, um, it jumps up by 100 centimeters. That's fine. We're going to actually use this default point, but we want to kind of have a fall off. We want these cubes to kind of come down gradually. So how do we do that? We're going to use a field, a linear field. Bring in your linear field. Let's rotate the camera here so we can see what we're doing. And it will change the distribution of these points of data and you'll have a fall off of 100 centimeters, which is great. Very important for this tutorial to work is there is a button just below the field panel here called enable disable value clamping. We want to make sure this is ticked off because we do not want to clamp the data points here. And I'll show you what we are going to do. So select your linear field, go into remapping and in the min section, put that to minus 100 and tick off clamp min. And that's important because you want this fall off to continue onwards. And I will show you what happens if this button is ticked. It basically clamps that fall off there and we don't want that to happen. So make sure that is off. OK, very cool. So we have this point of distribution. We've changed how this is going to fracture slowly getting there. The next thing we want to do is we want to select our Veroni fracture. We want to go to effectors. And we want to start affecting this and pulling this apart. So let's press shift C and bring in a random effector. And this is cool because we're instantly getting feedback here and we are liking the look of this with glass. We're not going to put on our glass texture just yet. Bring our X to 40, maybe our Y to 200 and our Z to Let's try 75. Zoom out. And you can you know, play with this as much as you want. You get different looks. Make sure the transfer space is set to effector. Go into your coordinates and put the B to minus 45. So we just angle off these slices in the fracture, which is very cool. And if we put our transfer space back to node, this coordinates is ignored. So it is important that you put the transfer space to effector. Select your Verona fracture. Make sure you have the effectors tab selected again. And bring in your push part. And this is far too much. Let's bring the strength down to 15. And we get a really cool push part here. This is starting to look very cool. If we select our Verona fracture 
and have the effectors panel selected. Just want to make sure you're aware of this. We change the hierarchy of the effectors here. It will affect the whole look and distribution of these points. So make sure the random effector is the first one and the push part is the second one. I have driven myself absolutely insane at times trying to figure out why things aren't working the way they are with the Verona fracture and it's because the effectors have a hierarchy that they adhere to. Okay, now the next bit is texturing. So let's set up a camera, go into a camera here and I've middle mouse clicked to get all four panels. So I just have an idea of what's going on. Go into the coordinates of our camera. Let's just maybe go zero, zero. Move our camera around here, back there. Bring in our Redshift render view. Let's start texturing. Let's create a standard material. Let's turn on a render. Um, and bring our material, drag it onto the Verona fracture. Call this glass. Um, and bring in a dome light and we are going to use, I'm just type in HDR to the assets panel. Let's move my face. Let's come down. We want something kind of colorful, like really, really colorful. A bit of purple, bluish. This one looks kind of cool. Select your dome light, go into the objects panel, drag ZBrush Barcelona, untick background. So let's start making some glasses panel and move my face. Okay, now that we have our HDR selected in our dome light, let's start texturing this. Let's actually lock our panel in down here. Scroll down to the weight and put it up to one from transmission. And this is beginning to look like glass already. Let's change our IOR to 1.33. Bring our dispersion of five and you'll start to see the light bounce around in our fractured glass. The next node we want to do is a ramp node. Click load present. Use black, violet, orange. We're going to pipe the ramp node into the color of the reflection. And now you are starting to get the look that we are going for. Change the intensity of our dome light to two. Brighten that up, maybe four actually. Okay, so we need to control the roughness of our glass. So to do this, we're going to bring in another ramp node and we're gonna leave it at the default black to white. We're gonna pipe it into a roughness. And now you have control over this roughness here. If we bring up the black, so we can control the roughness with this node, which is very handy. And maybe just bring up the knot here. We're actually gonna bring the camera up to maybe 45. Just zoom out in our render. Move the camera along here. Back to maybe, we just wanna really frame this nicely. Cool. Now, very important to make this scene work is just getting the color to really make this glass look vibrant and there's a bit of tweaking and nuance to doing this so there's a few ways we could do this we could change the u of our dome light here of the hdr so that will actually change your color which is very cool you know you could play around with how the dome light is actually rotating which will change how the light distrib distribute i'm going to keep the u at default and bring the exposure or the intensity up to five now you will see here that our, and because it's in progressive rendering mode, it, the light isn't traveling through all of the glass. This can be a little bit frustrating. You're like, why is it not doing this? And this is to do with the render settings. Okay, so let's start looking at the render settings of this scene. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just close our materials panel because I think we've got that down, but we can go back in later if we need to and just collapse that panel. Get a render setting panel locked in here. And before we touch anything, we want to A-B test stuff. So the best way to do that, just maybe get a crop here. Before we do that, let's just change the resolution. So we're working with the right resolution. And let's just work with this crop of 
our render pull out this panel here and set a bucket render and we're just using the default render settings here and we can start comparing back and forth of what's working and what's not working okay so let's take a snapshot then let's start to play with our render settings it's called the snapshot default switch our mode to advanced and this is important so i'm going to explain my logic of changing certain settings so we want to change the trace depth of the brute force to eight we want the light to travel further through the glass giving us more kind of rich color then we want to go to our globals which is trace depth also change our combine to 10 bring refraction to eight bring ref sorry bring reflection to eight bring refraction to eight and then we also want to just look at our sampling let's leave automatic sampling on for now and let's just do a bucket render and compare both okay our bucket render is done let's take a snapshot and just have a look at both of these and we can see a huge difference already with changing those parameters so this was our default and this is trace depth change so it's good to name these snapshots just so you have a point of reference because you might have and what's happening here is the light is traveling further. You're getting a richer color inside the glass and that the dispersion of that light is greater. It's further. It's traveling more. We're getting just a richer color overall. Now, one thing I have noticed is the noise levels are still a little bit high. Can we change this? Let's have a look and see how we could possibly change this. We're going to keep our globals the same and our global trace depth the same. Maybe the brute force rays in the secondary engine might be um, worth increasing let's have a look at that change the brute force raise to 1024 and go back into your sampling and turn off automatic sampling i'm not too worried about render time on this because we're just doing still frames but we'll set our max to 32 our min maybe to 8 let's just have a look at our scene what are the most important things for redshift to render here reflection refraction and the light essentially so we're going to bring them all up to 1024 1024 and so everything's at 1024 we've changed our samples min and max and we've kept the globals the exact same which is great let's start rendering again and we can compare okay cool so that render was actually so much faster the reason being is we've told redshift where to focus its attention we have lost some quality in the render though which we can see there is less noise using automatic sampling which kind of makes sense but the render time is much much longer this was 15 seconds this was 55 seconds we're going to do one more and um, we're going to copy this name I'm gonna put it here and we're just going to put sampling in front to show that you've changed the sampling in this. Uh, we're going to go sampling A and we're going to zoom out. And we're going to just multiply our sampling by two. So multiply by two. So 2048. 248. And go down again. Multiply by two. And we're going to then bucket render again and see if there is a difference in the noise levels. Okay. That render is finished so let's have a look zoom right in here and so there is a little bit less noise for sure how do we compare to the trace step change still a little bit more noisy it's 26 seconds though um does that make a difference it's still half the time which is huge we can maybe use that as the middle ground so that's just upping multiplying the samples by two there which is cool we're going to go with this render and um, it's a little bit noisy, but that's fine. It gives us something to work with and we can actually get rid of the noise in After Effects. OK, so our render settings are in a good place. It's a bit noisy, but we're going to get rid of that in post. Um, the next thing we want to do is start outputting this scene and getting some really cool still images going. So let's just frame the object a bit better with our camera. Oh and we'll just move our camera in a bit so we just tighten that framing a bit more there we go that's looking cool and let's just close our render settings here and zoom in so we have a nice big frame to work with and let's go back into our glass material i think it's a little bit too rough so what i'm going to do here is in transmission, I'm going to put the extra roughness to minus 
and this will make it a little bit more transparent and get that light bouncing around a bit better. Okay, cool. So we can output some really cool different looks with the system that we have here. If I flick off the random effector, this push part is the only effector here and you get this really cool like diagonal line of sliced glass. Let's move the camera down just a tad bit more so it's more in the middle. And we're going to actually use this frame straight off because that is something that looks quite cool. Going back into our render settings, I'm going to use an open EXR at 16 bit. You can use whatever format you want and let's render that out as is. Okay, so this is our render. This is looking pretty cool. The glass is refracting on itself. And this render is not going to be super complicated. I'm not doing crypto mats or different passes, just rendering on a black background. Just keep it simple. Let's have a play around with this system and see what other frames we can use. So we have the random effector here. Let's turn on our progressive render. And we're going to render this straight off the bat as well. Change that 0, 1, 0, 2. And you can also set up takes in Cinema 4D and just have different takes that you render. I'm not going to do that today, but that is something worth noting. Have a look at Cinema 4D's takes. And we're going to just bang out our second still. Okay, brilliant. We have our second still frame that we're going to work with. Two frames rendered. We're going to look for a third frame here. And we're going to just play around and experiment and have a bit of fun. Okay, cool. So we've played around with this. We've rotated our linear field. We've played around with the position here. Um, let's open this up and have a look. And we've got this really cool frame we haven't done much. We've brought our randomizer down the strength to five. So we still get a little bit of randomness. We brought the push part down to 10. Um, and just by playing with these parameters, we've got this kind of cool, almost chandelier, halo-esque fractured glass just hovering, which I quite like. And I'm going to use this one. Um, let's go back into our render settings and just save them as fractured glass three. We're going to set this to render and we are going to then jump into After Effects and have a look at how to really bring this whole piece together. OK, cool. That's our render done. Let's jump into After Effects and see what we can conjure up. That is the end of part one of this tutorial. If you got this far, great. Um, it's been a long one. I didn't actually expect this tutorial to be as long as it's turned out. But the next part will be solely in After Effects. We'll be looking at how to do noise and how to do some post color correction glows. Um, so stay tuned for that one. That one will be out very soon. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment and subscribe and consider becoming a Bold and Break member. Loads of perks involved and it only starts at one pound. Look forward to seeing you in part two and please keep an eye out for it. Thank you and goodbye.